I made a modern desk that has two drawers and a center compartment that lifts up to act as a vanity. First of all, huge thank you to this week's sponsors, Squarespace, where I personally host my website and I think it's amazingly easy to use. I have free plans on my website and you can download the plans for this desk build over there or you can head to squarespace.com slash Tamar and get 10% off your first order. Use the code Tamar at checkout. And huge thank you to this week's other sponsor, Armor Tool, where I'm going to be using their auto jig to help build this desk. Let's get started. I started out this build by breaking down a bunch of plywood and it's hard for me to manage such big pieces at the table saw, so I like to break them down using my circular saw. The top of this desk is going to be divided into three different compartments. So I split up the difference on that panel and then I took it over to the crosscut sled to cut it up into three different pieces. Then I broke down the rest of the pieces that will become the compartment dividers. To join these pieces, I'm going to be using the new auto jig from Armor Tool. This thing is really cool. When you clamp down your material, it automatically adjusts for the thickness by adjusting the depth stop collar on the bit and the depth setting on the drilling guide block all at the same time. A super cool feature is that the drilling guide block is color coded with corresponding colored screws so you always know which screw length to use. When you clamp down a thicker piece of wood, you can see how everything adjusts at the same time. Now back to my project, I put the piece into the jig, I clamped it down, locked down the depth collar, stored the allen key back on the jig, removed the bit, and then drilled away. Another cool feature is that you could change around the hole pattern, so I put my end piece in there and then drilled some more holes. Now that I'm ready to join the pieces, I can take out the bit that's stored underneath the jig and go inside and join my pieces together. I glued, clamped, and screwed the divider pieces to the top sections of the desk I cut earlier. I'm building this upside down so no screw holes are going to be showing on the top of the desk. Before attaching these compartments to the bottom of the desk, I need to install the draw slides. To get an accurate measurement for the draws, I placed both slides into the compartment and measured the opening. The front and back pieces will be in between the sides of the draw, so instead of measuring, I just place two pieces of the scrap ply against my stop block for a perfect fit. I like to install the draw bottoms into a groove that goes around all of the pieces. To make this groove accurately, I used my Curve Maker jig. After making one pass on all the draw parts, I adjusted the jig and then adjusted my fence, and then took all the pieces to make another pass to make a perfectly sized groove for the draw bottoms. To get the correct width for the draw bottom, I lined up all the pieces, took a measurement, and then cut a piece that was slightly smaller than that measurement that I took. Then repeated the same process to get the right length for the draw bottom, and then cut it to size. To assemble the draws, I used the auto jig again to make pocket holes on the front and back pieces. Then I placed the quarter inch plywood into the bottom grooves I made earlier, put glue on the ends, and lined everything up. I tried a couple of ways to clamp this draw into place before screwing it down, but I found the easiest way to do it was really just to line up each corner with a square, hold it down, and then screw it into place. The reason why I haven't attached the bottom yet is so that I can easily put a drill into the compartment while I'm installing the draw slides. To install the slides, I put a spacer underneath them, use a combination square to make sure it was a perfect distance from the front of the compartment, pre-drilled the holes, and then screwed it down. Now remember, I'm building this upside down, so I put the draw in upside down on some spacers, make sure it's flush with the front, and then use a combination square to get the perfect measurement for where the corresponding part of the slide that goes on the draw should go. So I pre-drill some holes and then screw that down. Then I repeated the same process on the other side. And making sure that the draw was still resting on those spacers, I pulled it out and then I pre-drilled for the holes on the back of the slide and then locked that down as well. I actually ended up swapping out these slides for different ones because this push to open feature did not work with my design. I placed the compartments on the panel that I was using as the bottom of the desk, used some tape as some spacers for the middle section so that it would be able to lift up freely, then marked a line for where to cut the bottom panel. I cut it to its final size at the crosscut sled and began the assembly process. I placed everything upside down on my bench and then marked out where the dividers were on the bottom so that I know where to pre-drill my holes. Then I pre-drilled all the holes and screwed it all down into place. Oh, I also put glue in there as well. Off camera, I assembled the pieces that would make up the center compartment just using butt joints and screws. 
and I turned everything upside down again, placed the cover as a lift up spacer, and then repeated the same process of marking out the dividers, pre-drilling and screwing it down. Now I could turn my attention to the base. I'm using rough white oak to make two by twos for the base, but if you're using the plans I have available on my site, you can just purchase already milled two by twos. Since I don't have a jointer, I use a jointer sled at my planer to get one flat face. And I can run through the planer on the other side to get another flat face. And again, no jointer. So I found this new way to join the edges by using a flush cut trim bit on a router and it makes a really straight edge. I didn't have a bit that was long enough to get to this material for the routers that I have. So I ended up finishing off on the router table and I had some really straight square edges. Moving over to the table saw, I could then rip down these pieces into the two by twos. I recently just upgraded to the dedicated ripping blade and I feel like it makes such a difference when I'm ripping through material, especially this super hard white oak. This blade also has flat bottom teeth, so I'm excited to use it for some joinery in future projects. Then I brought all those pieces over to the planer to bring them down to their final thickness before cutting them to their length. Instead of measuring for this length, I don't like to measure. I like to line up the pieces and then mark for my cuts and I find that that is way more accurate. I cut all these straight ends on my crosscut sled and then for the angled pieces, I moved over to the miter saw. All the angles are around 10 degrees. The front legs have the angle cut on both of their ends. So first I cut the angle on one end. Then I placed that angled cut against a straight edge and lined it up with the back leg that was already cut to length to get the perfect measurement without actually measuring. I repeated the same process for the top apron and bottom stretcher. I would line up the pieces that I wanna cut, place my already cut pieces on them, making sure that they were the correct distance that I wanted from the edge of the table, and then I would mark the cut, cut it to length, and it was the perfect fit. To join the base, I used dowels. I used this dowel jig that I posted a video about a couple of weeks ago. Basically, it drills perfectly angled holes to accommodate the angle of the legs. I'll put a link to that video down below if you're interested. To drill for the dowel holes on all the straight pieces, I just use this little marking jig that I use in a couple of my other videos. It's just an easy way to mark out your hole locations without measuring each and every piece. I drilled the holes on the edges at the drill press and the holes on the end grain. I set up this whole clamping station and just freehanded it and crossed my fingers. Before assembling, I did a test fit just to see if everything was going to fit nicely and I was super happy with the results. It's been freezing outside lately, so I have to do all of my glue ups inside so that the glue will set nicely. So I put glue in all the holes and on all the dowels and then tapped everything into place. I know it looks like I'm kind of calm and zen here, but I always panic during my glue ups. So when I clamped it up and I saw that everything was fitting so nicely, it was so satisfying. After the glue dried on the legs, I marked out the holes for the long stretchers that were gonna connect the legs and then drilled out for the holes using this drilling guide block that helped me keep my holes nice and straight. And then freehanded the holes on the ends of the stretchers again. Back inside for another stressful glue up, I got everything into place and I should have measured this beforehand, but I was glad that I had clamps that were long enough to handle this. After clamping it down, I just made sure that everything was really square and I could not have been happier with the results. While that dried, I used wood filler to fill in all the end grain of the plywood, primed and painted the desktop. Now I actually had a fail here. I thought I was gonna be able to use this piano hinge with a soft closed lid stay, but the compartment was actually too shallow for the stays that I tried. So I'm going to be replacing this piano hinge with some torsion hinges instead, but I'll show you guys how I installed this hinge anyway. After setting the correct depth on the bit using a spacer inside the hinge, I set the edge guide on the router to create a perfectly fitting space for the hinge. Well, almost perfect. I still had to use a chisel to get the corners to be nice and square so the hinge would fit. To make sure I was drilling directly in the center of the holes for the hinge, I used a center finding drill bit or what's called a VIX bit, and then I could screw it into place. To attach the lid, I flipped it on over its side and used some spacers to hold it up and then made sure I was in the right position, pre-drilled and then screwed it into place as well. Moving on to the draw front, I cut them to size and then used this rounded router bit to create a recess that will act as a hidden draw pull. 
Then I could install the front onto the actual draw. Ignore that little mess that was under there. That was a little mistake. But I put some hot glue on the front, put it in place, waited a few seconds, pulled it open, clamped it on, and then I was able to screw it into place from the inside. And that soft close is always so satisfying. Now I had an oversight with the middle compartment lid. I wanted to use these L brackets to hold them in place, but I didn't accommodate for their thickness in the compartment that was inside. So I marked them out and then I used a router to route out some space so that they would sit nice and flush inside the box. After using the router, I used the chisel to square up the corners and then repeated the process on the oak front. But these could not go all the way through because I didn't wanna see it from the top. So I had to do a plunge cut to get it so that it was going to be hidden underneath the ply. I squared up those edges again with the chisel and then it was sitting nice and flush and it won't get it in the way of the compartment and the lid will completely close. I glued and clamped that front face onto the compartment lid, make sure everything was even. And then once the glue set up a little bit, I took it off and then I pre-drilled for the L brackets and then screwed them all into place. I'm hoping that the glue in these L brackets will be strong enough to withstand the resistance of lifting and closing the lid. I've been wanting to try Osmo oil for a while and this is their natural color, which is perfect for light colored wood since it's slightly pigmented so the wood will not yellow. I decided to use mirrored acrylic for the vanity instead of glass. To cut it, I scored a line with an acrylic cutting tool then snapped it off to get the correct size. Then I placed the mirror on the top and measured to make sure that everything was in the right place and then I used some tape as a guide so that I could put it down in the right place. I did some testing with multiple adhesives to see how it would affect the mirrored backing and most of the ones that I tried ate away at the mirror so I just used this double sided tape to place it down. Now finally I was able to assemble everything so I used some figure 8 tabletop fasteners. I just drilled a hole using a forstner bit and then screwed them into place and then screwed from underneath and the top was now connected to the base. Last thing to do was put the draws in and it's done! I'm really happy with how this desk turned out. I think it's really clean and modern looking and it looks great in the room. The angled legs are such a nice feature and it was really easy to accomplish using some simple tricks. Some of my favorite features are the hidden draw poles that I accomplished with using that router bit and I love a soft closed draw. The center compartment is really great. I think my daughter is really going to enjoy this part of it. I had an issue with a soft close stay not working so well. So I'm going to have to replace this piano hinge with some torsion hinges, I think, and because the soft close stays that I wanted to use just would not close being such a small space in here. So actually, if you have any suggestions on soft close stays that would work in a small spot like this, that would be really helpful. Um, but I think I'm going to use some torsion hinges instead. I'll put an update on my Instagram when I do that. I think my daughter is going to love this part. So thank you guys so much for watching and thank you to this week's sponsors, Armor Tool and Squarespace. I have been using Squarespace from the start and that's where all my projects live. You can set up a portfolio of your work like I have or you can easily set up a shop to sell your items. I'm still working on that part of my site. Squarespace makes it so easy with their wide variety of amazing templates and editing your site couldn't be easier. I have zero experience with building a website, so their content block system is perfect for me. After easily adding content blocks, editing your work is also super simple. Just click, drag, and drop. That's it. Since Squarespace is based on templates, you might be concerned that your site's going to look just like everyone else's, but that's totally not the case since you can customize the design to any style you prefer. You can easily customize the fonts and the colors and all the text sizes and experiment with different templates as well. Some other great features are the ability to send out email campaigns and an amazing website analytics section so you could keep track of your site. I also love that you can view how your site's going to look on multiple devices like a phone. Speaking of phone, one of their best features is the new Squarespace app where you can edit your site and even create new content while you're on the go. So being able to manage my site from my phone is totally a game changer. So head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial or when you're ready. Squarespace.com slash Tamar for 10% off your first order and make sure to use Tamar at checkout. So thank you again for watching and I'll see you on the next one. <gasps> I love it. You love it? Yeah. What, what are you going to put in there? Um, maybe some of my nail polish. Ooh, I hope you don't get nail polish all over it. I won't. <laughs> well, maybe if I want to splatter it with different colors. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs>